Have you ever pondered why we feel the way we do? Emotions, they're a complex mix of chemicals, neurons, and a dash of mystery. Joy, sadness, fear, love. They all seem so different, yet they originate from the same place, our brain. This organ, no larger than a head of cauliflower, controls not only our thoughts, but also our feelings. Intriguing, isn't it? How does this happen? How does the brain conjure up these feelings? Well, it all comes down to our brain and its intricate workings. Emotions, those complex reactions to our experiences and thoughts. Emotions are like the unseen puppeteers of our lives. They pull the strings, guiding our actions, shaping our experiences. But what exactly are they? In essence, emotions are our brain's responses to stimuli, whether it's a heartwarming scene in a movie or a stressful situation at work. There are two main types of emotions, primary and complex. Primary emotions are our immediate responses to stimuli. They're universal, experienced by all of us, regardless of culture or background. These include feelings like joy, sadness, fear, and anger. Then we have complex emotions, also known as secondary emotions. These are not instinctive, but rather, they are learned through experience. They include feelings like guilt, shame, pride, and jealousy. These emotions often arise as a response to our primary emotions. For instance, you might feel guilty, a complex emotion, for being angry, a primary emotion, at someone. Emotions play a crucial role in our survival and daily functioning. They act as a signal, alerting us to potential dangers or opportunities. Fear, for instance, triggers a fight or flight response, preparing our bodies to react to a threat. Joy, on the other hand, encourages us to seek out and repeat pleasurable experiences, which can lead to learning and growth. So, emotions aren't just feelings, they're essential tools for survival. Now, the brain is our emotional command center. Think of our brain as the maestro of our internal orchestra, conducting a symphony of emotions. And one area of the brain conducts the most emotive sections of this symphony, the limbic system. This little known system is the powerhouse behind our feelings, memory, and physiological responses. Let's take a closer look at this fascinating system. First up, we have the amygdala, the brain's alarm system. It's like a watchful guardian, always on the lookout for emotional information. When it senses something that might be a threat, it sounds the alarm, triggering a cascade of physiological responses the pounding heart, the sweaty palms, that we know as fear. Next, meet the hippocampus, the memory maestro. It's the part of your brain that helps you remember that time you fell off your bike when you were five, or the taste of your grandmother's apple pie. It's also the part that helps you remember emotional experiences like the joy of a birthday surprise or the sadness of a loved one's passing. Then there's the hypothalamus, the brain's thermostat. It maintains your body's internal balance or homeostasis, regulating everything from your body temperature to your hunger and thirst. But it also plays a crucial role in emotions. When you're angry or scared, it's the hypothalamus that triggers the physical responses that accompany these feelings, like a racing heart or a dry mouth. And it's not just about the individual parts. These components of the limbic system work together. A team of maestros conducting our emotional symphony. The amygdala sounds the alarm. The hippocampus dredges up relevant memories, and the hypothalamus triggers the physical responses. Together, they create the complex, nuanced emotional experiences that make us human. In essence, these areas of the brain make us feel, remember, and respond. But how do the brain and emotions interact? Well, when we experience emotions, our brain becomes the maestro, conducting a symphony of neural activity. Picture the amygdala, that almond-shaped structure nestled deep within our brain, this is our emotional processing hub, where feelings like love, joy, fear and anger are first recognized and evaluated. From the amygdala, emotional signals fan out across the brain, engaging various regions. If a threat is perceived, the amygdala sends a distress signal to the hypothalamus, our body's command center. This initiates the fight or flight response, quickening our heartbeat and sharpening our senses. On the other hand, if the emotion is positive, like joy or love, the signal might travel to the reward circuit, lighting up areas associated with pleasure and satisfaction. But the story doesn't end here. Our emotions don't just hang out in our brain, they also shape our thoughts and behaviors. Ever noticed how when you're feeling blue, even your favorite song might sound off key? Or how when you're elated, the whole world seems to shine a little brighter? 
This is because our emotions can color our perceptions of the world, influencing how we interpret and respond to events around us. Now let's talk about emotional intelligence. This is the ability to recognize, understand, and manage our own emotions and the emotions of others. It's like being fluent in the language of feelings. Higher emotional intelligence can lead to better relationships, improved decision-making, and increased resilience in the face of adversity. So, in essence, the brain and emotions are in a constant dance, each influencing and being influenced by the other. It's a complex, dynamic relationship with the brain setting the rhythm and emotions dictating the steps. Indeed, the dance between our brain and emotions shapes our lives in profound ways. So, we've taken a fascinating journey through the world of emotions and the brain. We began by defining what emotions are, those complex reactions that are triggered by certain stimuli, be it an event, a person, or a memory, creating a whirlwind of feelings within us. Then, we delved into the intricate role of our brain in processing these emotions. We discussed how specific regions of our brain, like the amygdala and the hippocampus, play crucial roles in generating and remembering emotions. We also explored the complex relationship between our brain and emotions. We learned how they're intertwined, each influencing the other in a never-ending dance. Our emotions shape our brain's responses and, in turn, our brain's reactions influence our emotions. This intricate dance between our emotions and our brain makes us who we are, affecting our decision-making, our relationships, and ultimately, our lives. Next time you feel a surge of emotion, remember, it's just your brain doing its amazing work.